Hi YouTube friends and teachers and homeschoolers. This is Elizabeth with an S with another hands-on activity for your classroom or your homeschool. So today we're going to do some chemistry in action and make some Play-Doh. The recipe that I'm going to use does not require any heating, so it's something easy that you could do in the classroom as long as you have the materials that you need. In addition to talking about the chemical reaction, you can also discuss things like mixtures, solutions, and density, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Let's get started with the recipe, and then I'm going to make it, and then we will talk about the chemical reactions. So here we have the recipe for what you need, and I have actually halved this recipe because I don't want to make too much, but you can double it or triple it, or just keep it this way for your students or your homeschoolers to trial it out. So you need one cup of flour, half a cup of salt, half a tablespoon of oil, and I'm using vegetable oil, quarter cup of cold water, some food coloring, and then the other things that you'll need are some bowls and spoons, measuring cups, that sort of thing. So you can take a screenshot of this right now if you want the recipe. And we can get started with the Play-Doh. So I first have my bowl here that I'm going to take my flour, one cup of flour, put that in the bowl. I'm going to take my half a cup of salt and put that in the mixing bowl. And then I'll just stir that together. Okay, now this is a mixture. Um, a mixture is when we have two different types of particles um, in the same container. And you can actually see them, although this is a little bit difficult because they're both white, but you can physically see uh, the different particles in that container. And I hope the lighting is okay for this. So once you have that, you can put it to the side and then you can mix the wet ingredients together with the food coloring. So here I have a quarter cup of cold water and I'm actually going to put it in this bowl just in case I need a little bit more cold water. I can use my measuring cup again. And I'm going to make some red Play-Doh today. You can use liquid or you can use powder. Um, powder is what I had. So that's what we're making today. And this is strawberry red, according to the label. Anyway. Um, and then once you've mixed that up nicely, you then will add one half tablespoon of oil. And like I said, I am going to use vegetable oil. There we go, you can see that. And this is where you can also talk about mixtures. You can definitely see the oil compared to the water. Um, but you can also talk about density here. And um, you can do something like a density column with like um, ethanol, water, and oil, dye them different colors of food coloring, and you can actually see them on the layers, one on top of the other. Now, once you have mixed that, you are simply just going to add this to this. And I'm gonna just use the same spoon to stir it around, and there we go. Once it gets a bit dry, you then need to start using your hands to mix it together. I didn't want to go overboard on the water, 
but we probably need to add a little bit more water in there. So I'm going to go ahead and just put in another quarter of a cup just to be on the safe side. I don't want to add too much because then I'll have to add more. I'll have to add more flour. So in fact, let me just do a little bit and we'll see how that goes. All right, I'm going to take this out now. And here we have our Play-Doh. And you can do all kinds of things with your Play-Doh. I'm actually going to use this Play-Doh in another um, science activity. So I am going to use it for something else. Now, um, the kneading is going to cause the water to dry out. So that's why I'm continuously kneading it. It's gonna make this more and more Play-Doh-ish. So um, what I want to do first is put the instructions on the screen so you can take a screenshot of it and then uh, we'll talk about the science behind the play-doh so here we have the instructions very simple you could do this in your school classroom and then donate the play-doh to the kindergarten class or something of that nature basically exactly what I did. Mix the flour and the salt in the bowl, mix water and food coloring in another bowl, add the oil, then add the liquid to the flour and salt, and stir. Once you've done that and it gets a bit um, dried, you want to start kneading it. You can knead it in the bowl first because it might get a bit messy, and then you take it out of the bowl and continue kneading it. And here is my Play-Doh. Not as red as I had hoped, but okay, it's pink Play-Doh. So, um, and you can see it's not crumbly. Um, you can roll it into shapes. Do all kinds of fun things with it. Um, so let's talk about the science behind the Play-Doh. Now, um, first of all, you're basically forcing a chemical reaction in the Play-Doh. Um, so what's happening is when you combine everything together, the salt is going to form what's called a matrix around the flour particles. The flour here is the main chemical and basically the word matrix just means all the other stuff combined together and what they're going to do is have an effect on the main chemical which in this case is the flour. So um, as you are kneading the, the play-doh the water is going to dry and basically it just leaves the salt to cement the flour together and that's the chemical reaction that's happening here. Okay. We know this is a chemical reaction because we cannot separate out the salt from the flour and the food coloring and the oil. It's all combined together in a way that cannot be reversed. And so typically, we know that that is a type of chemical reaction. So there you have it, the Play-Doh, um, a simple chemistry activity so there you have it, chemistry in action, talking about chemical reactions. You don't really have to talk about the matrix if the students are too young, but you've got all kinds of different um, chemistry aspects to discuss. There's my little snowman 
Play-Doh Snowman. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that this will continue to dry out as it sits out. The water is going to be evaporating off of it. So you do want to put it into a Ziploc bag of some kind to keep the moisture, have it retain as much moisture as you can for a period of time. Eventually, of course, it will dry out. It is just water, salt, and flour. So um, it is not like permanent Play-Doh. Um, but it is really not that expensive. Water is pretty free. Um, some simple food coloring, the flour and the salt, and a little bit of oil that you could even, um, if you have um, parent room parents, you can just ask them to bring a few supplies, maybe to donate them to the room so you don't have your classroom, so you don't have to um, buy the items yourself, although Typically, they're not super duper expensive. So this is something that I feel is pretty inexpensive that you could do in your classroom. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I will see you around next time with another science activity that is fun and engaging for your students. Uh, this is Elizabeth with an S. Have a great week.